Konnichiwa mina, boku wa Jeremy desu. Yoroshiku Today is day 330. It is Wednesday, November the 26th, 2014. And I hope that you are well. It white shat last night. Everywhere. Wake up this morning, there's white shit. Shit no one wants. Whatever you want to call it. All over the frickin' place. And it wasn't just a light dusting. No, no, no. This was the thick shit that... It was really heavy, too. I had to... Uh, uh, do the sidewalks and stuff at work along a busy street, trunk heel. So for uh, for those of you out there that are ever the type of person for um, inflicting punishment on yourself, go and do your sidewalks, like snow shovel them. Because A, it's actually a good ab workout, believe it or not. I could feel it today. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And uh, there are people out there, some that are respectful, that will, you know, go a little bit slower. And then there's the assholes that purposely rev up their engines, and you hear them coming, but by the time you turn around, you get a nice face full of white shit. A giant wave of it, if you will. That was joyous. So, thank you, Snow. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Anyways, that's not what I want to talk about today. Uh... One thing that bothers me about being a Sailor Moon fan, and I know that's a weird way to start off a sentence, especially when I do like the series, but it's the people that have the predispositions and thoughts that the whole series is about nudity and uh, all that kind of shit. Now, no, no, no. The most, I guess the biggest defender would be episode 200, the very last one, spoiler alert, for those of you who haven't seen it yet. But when there's the battle between Sailor Moon and Sailor Galaxia, and Sailor Moon is completely naked, save for some wings that she has that are sprouting out of her back. Now, it's a gigantic metaphor for all of you pervs out there and people that think that the series is all about titties and all that kind of shit. Um, it's a giant metaphor, in case you missed it. Because uh, basically the whole thing, you know, at least in the anime, um, she's, Galaxy is going on and 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 trying to point out the fact that Sailor Moon is being a bigot, basically because she is saying she doesn't want to fight, yet she wears a soldier's uniform, senshi uniform, because their sailor outfit is basically a sailor soldier outfit. And in some ways she's right in that observation, but just to basically show that is not true, Sailor Moon loses her entire outfit and is fighting in the nude. Now basically that's a very uh, insightful way of pointing out that it's just herself, her human self, that is not physically fighting back by using torturous devices or, or guns or whatever, anything like that. She's actually using her belief, her love, her heart, and the power of the Silver Crystal to help amplify this and to reach into Sailor Galaxia's inner self to find her good half. Um, there's a little bit of confusion all over the place because in the anime they make it out to be that Sailor Chibi Chibi Moon is Sailor Galaxia's good half. Her star seed, which in the anime she is. But she's supposed to be the good half and yet the good Sailor Galaxy is deep inside of her. Now in the manga we know that Chibi Chibi is Sailor Moon's future self kind of from another dimensional time where she comes back because she knows what her past self is going to go through, if that makes sense, and is there to try to help cheer her up. So there's, there's a lot of really profound things. If you watch Sailor Moon, the original anime, if you watch Sailor Moon Crystal, if you watch the manga, read the manga, if you watch the manga, uh, even the live action series, as cheesy as it started out to be, as cheesy as it was, uh, there's some really deep stuff in there. Like when Sailor Venus died, that was just insanely random. <laughs> But, okay, so, I don't know why people's thoughts, especially men, boys, automatically have to jump to sex. I know there's that whole thing of that's how we're wired and stuff like that, and in some ways, okay, whatever, you can use that, that argument to some extent, but for the most part, you gotta look a little bit further than that, and 
that's where a lot of guys get flack for not being so deep on things and that kind of bothers me <laughs> but you know I guess it is what it is so if you ever get a chance to watch episode 200 of Sailor Stars or if you've watched it already and you want to watch it again take that into account the fact that it's pointing out the fact that it's, it's the purity of the human emotion and the human soul that Usagi is using Usagi I say it like Sailor Mars Usagi <laughs> at least uh, Tomizawa Michie I don't know I don't think the new Sailor Mars voice actress does that but Tomizawa Michie she she used to say that all the time Usagi we're very nasal whereas the rest are like Usagi so there's the hard G or the soft G and I'm totally getting off topic but uh, yeah watch it and other ones too like yes there's the transformation sequences and yes they overdo them and they don't you know there's that fallacy that in ja in the Japanese version there was extended nude scenes and stuff like that in the transformations there were not what you see basically in the original dub is pr pretty similar to what you see in the original Japanese as well there's I mean look at the Viz one it's the same thing there's not any kind of extended nudity stuff and also there's a big difference between Sailor Moon and other shoujo anime that show um, nudity to some extent versus things like Bible Black or La Blue Girl or any of these other anime porns that are actually porns that show you everything <laughs> but that's another story as well because that's a whole other form of what do you call it? Sexism. In many ways. We'll have to discuss that another day. Anyway, I just figured I would go on with that without elaborating too, too much. Anyway, today is Wednesday, of course. I will see you tomorrow, which is Thursday. And have a great day, everybody. Try to stay warm. It is supposed to be nice in Kamloops tomorrow, like plus six or ten or something. And it's supposed to get below zero on Friday. So it's like, yee, no. <laughs> and we're supposed to get Arctic stuff coming in. So... Yay, Canada. <laughs> All right, Gemma, that ain't me now. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.